Let's have a look at question two now. In the regression results from table three, we use all the observations from week two of 2004 until week 48 of 2010-14. So we have here certain variables, which we'll discuss in a second. Let's see what the question is. Which hypotheses are tested? What's the name of the test? What's the actual value of the test? And what's the conclusion? Okay, so um, let's have a look. Over here, we have two regressions. And we can see that the dependent variable in both cases the, is the change in the logarithm of the price of the stock of Apple. So that's what we have. In model three, we have as independent variables, as explanatory variables, the lagged value of the dependent variable. So if the dependent variable is y, we're using the lagged value of one period of y and the lagged value of the, oh, sorry, the lagged value of the y variable of the dependent variable of two periods ago. So we're using the lagged variables as explanatory variables. Now, if we go to model four, what we notice is that we still have the lagged values of the dependent variable. We still have the change in the logarithmic price of one period ago and two periods ago. So we still have what we had in model three, but we're adding certain variables. We're adding the previous, the lagged value of the Google trend variables, also from one period ago and from two periods ago. So we're adding this other independent variables, X, with the lagged responses of one period and of two periods. Now, since we are adding variables, we're adding two variables over here, we would like to see if adding these two variables helps us predict the model better, helps us increase the explanatory power, helps us increase the R square of the model. Because recall, when we add variables to the model, when we add variables to the model, our, our R square increases. So R square increases. But the question is, is the increase in R square significant or not? Are the variables significant or not? Do this variable add explanatory power or not? So our hypothesis is that the additional variables, and if we give coefficients, we have beta one, beta two, beta three, beta four. These are the coefficients that show the effect of these additional variables. Either they have no effect, so they are just zero, no effect, zero coefficient, or at least one of them has an effect under the alternative is that at least one beta has an effect. At least one beta is different than zero. Now, because we are testing, we are testing the R square increase, we want to see whether the change in R square is significant or not. So we're going to do an F test on R square. And how do we do that? We are comparing the differences in the R square of the full model, which is model four with four variables relative to the R square of the restricted model, which is model three with only two variables, divided by the number of additional variables in the model. And we add two additional variables in the model, divided by two, over one minus R square of the full model, divided by the number of observations. And the number of, number of observation is equal to 566. So divided by 566 minus the number of parameters, the explanatory variables in the full model. So in the full model, we have one, two, three, four explanatory variables, meaning minus four, and then minus one. Now, if we actually work out this test, what do we get? We have an F statistic, which is gonna be the difference between the R square of the full model. And we have the R square over here. These are the descriptions of the models. R square in the full model, that's model four. R square is 0 0.011. So it's 0 0.011 minus the R square of the restricted model, which in this case is model three. That's the R square of the restricted model, which is just zero divided by two over one minus the R square of the full model, which we said is 0 0.011 divided by this number, which is 566 minus four, that's 562 minus one is 561. Now, if we calculate this, we would get an F value equals to 3.12. 3.12. Now we could either compare this with the F critical value and give a conclusion, or we could just have a look at the model descriptions and see whether the change in the F statistic, the change in the R square is significant or not. And we can see that in the model four, when we add two additional variables, the change in the R square, the change in the F statistic that we compute is significant. It did not happen by chance. So we have enough evidence that adding the two variables, the two additional variables, which is the previous values of Google Trend one period ago and two periods ago adds explanatory power, adds value to the model. In other words, in other words, to just to just um, say it in a in a different way, as a conclusion, we can say that the Google Trend, Google Trend, is Granger causal, is Granger 
proposal on the change in the logarithm of the price of the stock of Apple. Hope this makes sense and we are done.